Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and I welcome you all to this 18th lecture of uh, the course titled Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. So this is uh, second lecture of module 6 and overall it is 18th lecture. Uh, so the, today, the title of today's lecture is uh, Wellbeing and Resilience. So let us have a brief recap of the last lecture before we talk about today's lecture. So in the last lecture that is lecture 17, uh, we discussed uh, the concept of you know mental health and well-being. Uh, so, we try to give you an overview of the concepts of you know, uh, health, mental health and well-being, the various uh, you know, prominent definitions of these uh, concepts and we then specifically try to understand the concept of well-being and uh, try to understand you know, uh, well-being from two different theoretical approaches. One is hedonic concepts of well-being and another is called as eudynomic concepts of well-being. So, in the hedonic concept basically you know talks about well-being in terms of pleasure, in terms of emotional experiences, in terms of happiness, in terms of satisfaction. Whereas, uh, and it is in psychology typically called as subjective well-being. Whereas, uh, eudynomic well-being which is also called as psychological well-being uh, talks about well-being uh, beyond just uh, you know transitory emotional uh, experiences. It talks about well-being in terms of uh, personal growth, self-actualization, uh, meaning and purpose in life, positive relationships and so on. We have discussed the in details about all these things. And then we have also discussed you know the various historical and biological roots of these two tradition, how historically these two uh, approaches of well-being uh, you know, conceptualization has come into uh, the today's literature, the historical background we discussed and then we also discussed some possible biological uh, you know, uh, connections to each of these traditions. And then we discussed that well-being uh, should be conceptualized as a kind of combination of both hedonic and eudynomic well-being. Uh, to understand well-being in a holistic way, it is always better uh, to measure or uh, look into well-being in terms of promoting well-being both hedonic as well as eudynomic well-being. So, well-being should be a combination of both hedonic and eudynomic uh, concepts. Uh, then we have discussed at last uh, the keys 13 dimensions of positive mental health. So, we discussed this particular model proposed by researcher named Keyes uh, who proposed a model where the, he conceptualized well-being by combining both hedonic as well as eudynomic concepts of well-being. So, he talked about three main dimensions of well-being positive or well-being or positive mental health. Uh, one is you know uh, basically emotional well-being which talks about you know uh, positive emotions and life satisfactions. Uh, then uh, to second factor is psychological well-being which is basically eudynomic well-being concepts such as you know uh, autonomy, meaning and purpose in life, you know positive relationships, environmental mastery and so on. And the last third factor was social well-being uh, which is basically described in terms of social integration, social contribution, social coherence uh, and social actualization and so on. So, today we will talk about the concept of resilience and how it is connected to uh, the concept of well-being and typically we will try to understand how can we build resilience using one particular model called Seligman's model of well-being which is also called as PERMA model P E R M A. Uh, so, we will try to understand all these concepts in today's lecture. So, uh, what is resilience? We have discussed the concept of resilience also in the context of post-traumatic growth when, when we discussed the concept of post-traumatic growth. So, the sense of resilience is another concept which is uh, closely connected to the concept of well-being. So, generally uh, in the literature of well-being you will also come uh, into uh, 
the discussion of resilience very often. So, resilience have been defined in the various ways you know some of the definitions are for example, you know a resilience is a dynamic process encompassing positive adaptation uh, within the context of uh, significant adversity. So, this is one definition which talks about resilience as a, as a dynamic process within us uh, and it talks about you know uh, the positive adaptation in an adverse adversity situation or in a life crisis. So, you positively adapt uh, in the context of significant adversity in life. Another definition uh, talks about resilience as characterized by good outcomes in spite of serious threats and adaptation or development. So, even at the face of serious threat you are able to adapt. So, basi basically resilience is about you know ab your ability to bounce back from a life crisis or, or an adversity of life. So, we often you know experience or many times we experience various adversities and life crises and many people uh, many times you know uh, it fi find it difficult to come out of difficulties of life or crises of life and some people very quickly come out of it. So, people who are able to very quickly bounce back their sense of resilience is much more. So, that is the idea of resilience, how quickly you are positively adapt to a situation and come back to your uh, normal functioning level. So, that indicates your sense of resilience. So, there are two defining aspects to resilience, one is um, exposure to significant threat or adversity. So, resilience is always discussed in the context of exposure to some threat or adversities or some uh, you know, uh, traumatic situation and the second aspect is once you are exposed to those uh, adversities of life, how quickly you are able to achieve positive ad adaptation despite threats, how quickly you are able to adapt to that situation. So, these are two important components in defining the sense of resilience. So, some researchers also uh, talks about or distinguish between resilience as a trait and resilience as a process. So, some people conceptualize uh, resilience uh, as a kind of personality trait. So, when we tr say something as a personality trait, we are talking about you know it is a part of your own individual characteristics. So, some people are just highly resilient, some people are simply not, not resilient. So, it, it is kind of part of your characteristic personality trait and some people talk it as a process. It is not just something that you are born with. Uh, it is it depends on various factors internal and external factors that interact to you know decide sense of resilience. So, as a trait it is considered as an individual ability to resist. So, it is more look like your ability your individual personal ability when we talk something as a trait uh, to resist being damaged by trauma and adversities. As a process we it is considered as an outcome of dynamic process. Uh, about bouncing back or recovering from the trauma or adversity. It looks at how an individual uh, recovers from the adversity. So, both conceptualization are there, uh, but most of the researcher you know, kind of consider resilience as a or beliefs that resilience involves thoughts, actions and behavior that one can learn. So, we are not just born with sense of resilience. Uh, most of us the sense of resilience is developed as a learning process throughout our life. Uh, so, it may depend on various thought processes, our actions, our environmental factors. So, it is more considered as a kind of process. So, it is not just a privilege of some people who are born with some you know, genetic composition for resilient to become resilient. You know, uh, It can be learned and it is a more conceptualized in terms of process. So, what is the relationship between uh, the concept of resilience and well-being? So, we have discussed uh, the meaning of well-being in detail in the last lecture. So, are there any relationship between the sense of resilience and well-being? Let us see some of the evidences. So, resilience and well-being are closely related constructs or concepts uh, to the extent that some well-being instrument measure resilience. You know, sometimes well-being and resilience are so closely connected and people conceptualize them in such a way that you know resilience almost becomes an indicator of well-being. So, they are very closely connected concepts and many research use them as an you know very you know correlated concepts. So, the relationship between resilience and well being is not very straightforward even though they are very closely connected they are not very straightforward some research shows you know the relationship can be very different depending on the situation or uh, the different factors. 
So, many research uh, indicate that higher level of well-being uh, leads to more resilience. So, generally there seems to be a lot of research indicate there is a positive relationship. So, as your well-being increases, your sense of resilience also increases. So, if your sense of well-being is higher, at the face of adversity, you are more likely to bounce back and come to your uh, you know, normal level of functioning in life. So, uh, it could be due to the fact that you know positive individuals or you know, people with higher well-being are more resilient because they approach situations expecting better outcomes and tend to elicit more positive response. So, sense of well-being basically makes you more resourceful and give you certain outlook towards life that you know you are able to deal with them and come out, out of the situation or difficulties uh, much more easily. So, that could be one reason why there is a positive relationship. One important component of well-being or hedonic well-being is positive emotions and uh, it research, research indicates that positive emotions actually facilitate sense of resilience because uh, in, uh, when we experience negative emotions, uh, then we are generally you know we are not able to deal effectively with a, with a situation. Uh, we become uh, narrow focused and uh, maybe mostly we get into destructive mode of you know, behavior. So, positive emotions, uh, if you have a higher sense of well-being uh, or particularly hedonic well-being, so your sense of po your positive emotion will be much higher. That will facilitate resilience because then uh, you will kind of able to uh, think properly and deal with the environment and will have much more resources uh, to deal with the situation. It is also possible that resilience uh, to predict a number of well-being outcomes such as subjective well-being. So, a lot of research also indicate that resilience can predict uh, well-being and various uh, indicators of well-being such as subjective well-being. So, a lot of research indicates there is a positive connection between them. However, some research also indicate that it is uh, that some incidents of well uh, antecedents of well-being and resilience diminish attainment of others. So, it is possible in certain contexts that you know some aspect of well-being or antecedents or factors that influences well-being may actually hinder the sense of resilience. For example, a uh, few studies uh, reported that the positive emotions associated with well-being uh, such as joy and calmness sometimes tend to generate a diffuse contentment rather than the sharp vivid focus on challenges associated with resilience. So, sometimes to become resilient, you need to be very sharp, focus, and uh, those kind of you know, you know uh, mode where you know you are able to really you know become very functioning oriented or you know uh, where you know you need to come out and do some sharp functionings at that particular moment. So sometimes positive emotion may diffuse some of this aspect sharpness in the mind, so which can kind of hinder your sense of resilience. So uh, some research at least indicates that it could be possible in certain contexts. Uh, but you know in most research actually shows that there is a positive relationship and uh, sense of well-being and positive emotions can actually lead to you know uh, or facilitate to one another. So, therefore, the relationship between well-being and resilience they are always very closely connected, but sometimes the relation may not be very straight, but uh, most of the research indicate a positive relationship between them. So, in this context, we will discuss uh, uh, Seligman's, uh, Martin Seligman's uh, model of well-being, which is also called as PERMA, P-E-R-M-A. So, we will try to see what is that. Now, we will discuss this model particularly in the context of well-being and resilience, simply because these two concepts are very closely, you uh, know, uh, this model is uh, more addresses uh, directly both well-being and resilience. The component of this model uh, are basically PARMA basically means you know each is a it, it is a kind of acronym for you know five component. So, P is for you know positive emotions, E is for engagement, R is for relationship, M is for meaning and A is for achievement or accomplishment. So, that is the meaning of P E R M A PARMA model. So, basically it talks about five dimensions of well-being and research generally shows this, this components as well-being and resilience are very closely connected. Uh, these components are also very uh, you know 
important in terms of facilitating resilience also. So, that is why I will discuss this model because it is the components are strongly connected to both well being because it is a model of well being. So, components are directly connected to the sense of well being, but these models are also very components are very strongly connected to sense of or increasing our sense of resilience also. So, let us see what are each of these component and uh, we will see how can we build each of these component. <coughs> so, we will try to summarize uh, some of the important aspects. So, Professor Seligman's research has proven that an increase in PARMA or all these component uh, will result is a result in an increase in resilience and boost mental health and well-being. So, all these components are important for boosting your uh, men, uh, your well-being and mental health as well as your sense of resilience. So, most of this component we will discuss uh, you know each of this component in much more detailed in many in so, some of the upcoming lectures individually, but here we will try to briefly summarize each of them and we will try to see how can we build or increase this component you know each of this component. So, that will be our focus in today's lecture. So, let us start with positive emotion. So, first, first component of PARMA model is P which is basically means positive emotions. So, we will have separate lecture on that also, but here we will just briefly uh, comment on important aspects. So, positive emotions basically uh, you know, are pleasant emotions uh, which may include emotions such as amusement, hope, interest, joy, love, compassion, gratitude and so on. Uh, so, these all these emotions whenever we experience, so we, we have a sense of pleasantness and sweetness within us when we experience such kind of emotions. So, in that sense they are called as positive emotions. Uh, research shows that positive emotions broadens our thought actions, thoughts and actions. So, whenever we experience positive emotions, uh, we kind of get expanded. So, we uh, our focus become more expanded and more inclusive in the sense that you know our thoughts become more uh, expanded and we are able to focus on much more uh, imp more important aspects, much more diverse aspects, uh, our behavioral repertoire also increases. So, positive emotions kind of you know broadens our thoughts and actions, whereas negative emotion actually narrows down our thoughts and actions. So, when we are very negatively focused such as you know you are very sad or anger, then we become very narrow focused and we are only focusing on the problems at hand. Uh, so, we are kind of get stuck in something and we are not able to think beyond that. So, that is the meaning of narrowing down or positive emotion does the opposite to that and it. So, because of that broadening, it helps to build various kinds of resources within us uh, to deal with a problem of life or to increase our sense of well-being. So, it, it may build our psychological resources because when you your thoughts thoughts are broadened, you become more creative, you can see much more solutions to a problem and it may build social resources in the sense that you know if we are under positive emotions, we are better, we are better able to connect with people, uh, people also find much more joy in our company. So, in that sense it also increases our social resources. So, and it can also build our physical resources in terms of you know. Uh, when you are playful, joyful, you know, it increases our physical resources also. So, positive emotions does these functions, it broadens our thought sections as well as builds various resources uh, and which in turn actually increases our sense of well-being as well as it promotes sense of resilience. So, positive emotion enhances well-being and performance related outcomes and it reduces our negative emotions. So, obviously, when you experience positive emotion, you cannot experience negative emotion in the sense uh, it will kind of undo negative emotions. So, how to build positive emotion or increase positive emotions so that it increases our well being as well as our sense of resilience because it is connected to both. So, there are some of the suggestions given uh, by various researchers. So, I took some of these suggestions from a well being and resilience center website. So, some of the ideas related to building positive emotion are practicing gratitude. So, we will look into gratitude also in much more detail in the coming lecture. Practic practicing gratitude basically means you, uh, you intentionally look back or look into positive aspects of your life or things for which you are thankful in your life. So, that is the meaning of 
practicing gratitude. Many, most of the time our focus remains in the problem areas or focus remains in the negative aspects of our life. So you may have 10 positive things in your life, but one negative thing, your whole focus goes there and you start complaining about things. Uh, simply because negative things and negative emotions catches our attention much more. Uh, so when we go into this complaining mode, uh, we experience negative emotions. But when we intentionally try to look at the positive aspects of your life or things for which I should be grateful or you express gratefulness and thankfulness towards that for whatever things or to the people who have contributed to your life, uh, it increases our sense of positive emotions. You feel good about it. You s so many positive emotions uh, are experienced by you know, sense of expressing sense of thankfulness and gratitude. So this is one of the important ways by which you can build po or increase positive emotions. Second thing is doing activities that you enjoy. So this is also very important. No? Mostly, you know, so try to do more activities which you enjoy. It could be a hobby, it could be anything that you enjoy or at least try to find times for doing those kind of activities. So doing something that you like and enjoy will, enha will enhance your positive emotions. Then obviously spending time with loved one, this is one of the best ways. So we feel immediate rush of positive emotions when we connect and talk and you know, uh, with people whom we love. So try to connect more and more with people whom you love or you know, your friends, whoever, family members. This will enhance your positive emotions. Uh, then playing with children, pets and friends, these are also basically connecting with things that you love. Uh, so, if you try to find this kind of leisurely time uh, to play with children, pets and friends, so this will also enhance your positive emotions. And uh, another um, strategy is doing exercises, particularly aerobic exercises. We have already talked about it in the, in the coping strategies section or in the lecture where I talked about physical ways of coping. Uh, there we have discussed that, you know, aerobic exercise or particularly you know physical exercise uh, and particularly aerobic exercise uh, can release some hormones such as endorphins which enhances your mood or you know it, in, it uh, and promotes positive mood so you can experience you know positive emotions by doing exercise also then obviously you know last is obviously listening to uplifting music that you like the music is one of the very simple and effective ways of immediately stimulating positive emotions you know whatever music that you like, uh, the moment you hear about uh, music, you know, it immediately you know, stimulates positive emotions. So it is also one of the very effective and easiest way of kind of stimulating uh, positive emotions. Uh, another concept called optimism is very strongly connected to positive emotions uh, because optimism is about you know, becoming, you know, looking at the brighter side of any future event. Uh, and it is very strongly connected to sense of resilience. People who are very resilient, they are very optimistic and positive emotion actually facilitated that optimism. Under negative emotions, we always become ne pessimistic. We see always the darker part of life or darker aspects of future. Uh, under positive emotion, we are because of broadening our thoughts and we are able to look at positive aspects of also. So in that sense, it promotes optimism and optimism is very strongly related to sense of resilience. The next component of PARMA model is E that is called as engagement. So engagement in life is basically about uh, one of the concept in psychology uh, which is called as flow experiences, F-L-O-W, flow. So it, it, it is about finding flow experience which basically means what? Uh, flow experiences happens, uh, uh, most of you might have experienced flow experiences sometimes in your life. It happens in the moment where you know you get intensely focused in a particular you know task at your hand. You get so intensely focused and engrossed in that particular task and in the present moment that you forget the track of time. I don't know how much time has passed and you forget other things in your environment. So you get so much engrossed uh, in that task that you forget other aspects including time. So then you are in the flow experience in that particular moment. 
So, we all might have experienced such moments in our life when we are engaged in some tasks which are very important and we enjoyed them so much that we forget about other aspects of our environment and we forget the tra keep track of time. So, flow experiences are very important in our life and uh, the more we experience flow, better it is for our sense of well-being and resilience. So, flow experience was primarily, you know, uh, kind of proposed by one uh, psychologist. Uh, his name is uh, Mihai Chiksen Mihai. It's very difficult to pronounce. I hope I am correct. Uh, he is uh, a leading researcher in that area. Uh, he found that flow happens when we perform a challenging task where we have the opportunity to use your skills and strength. So, generally it happens, uh, flow experiences happens when we engaged in a task which is challenging. So, it is not that very easy, it is not like very difficult and impossible task. It is a challenging task, it kind of you know uh, gives you an opportunity to strengthen or you know kind of stretch your skills and abilities. So, that is very important you know. The flow will never happen to a task which is very easy for you. Flow will never happen to a task which is very difficult for you that you are not able to do it. Uh, because in either case you will not be really engaged. Engagement happens when it is very challenging. That you have the skills and abilities, but uh, it will not be very easy. You need to extend and expand it. So, in those tasks generally flow happens. So, flow and engagement improve subjective well-being, uh, happiness, life satisfaction and positive effect. This is the research finding. So, this is very important uh, to find out activities that leads you to flow experience. It is also found to be correlated with increased performance, higher motivation and engagement and positive mood in organizational context. So, it has a lot of benefits in terms of our performance and efficiencies. So, how to build engagement or increase flow experiences? So, one thing is obviously you need to identify and do activities that leads to flow and engagement. So, you can identify the things that uh, or activities uh, that you know help uh, that you know whenever you do those activities it, it tends to you know, uh, you know tends to uh, kind of stimulate flow experience. So, we all may find flow experience in different activities. So, you need to find your own activities which can lead to flow experience. Find them and do those activities more and more at least you know. Uh, so, that will enhance your sense of flow experience or engagement in life or specifically. So, you will get much more focused in your as different aspect of your um, activities that you do in your life. Uh, the next thing is identify and use your signature strength. So, it is very important use your strengths. So, many people have different strengths, many people uh, many times people do not use those strengths or they do not maybe sometimes they do not get opportunities to use those strengths. So, it is very important that you need to use your signature strengths. So, your strength could be in anything, it could be you know uh, your communication skill, it could be your social skills, whatever it is. Whatever strength you have, use them more and more in different tasks and um, situations of your life uh, that will help you to enhance flow experiences. And uh, the another uh, suggestion is you know learn and practice mindfulness meditation technique. This is also very important. You know, we have already discussed in one full lecture on mindfulness and meditation. Uh, such a practice of mindfulness helps you to help you to focus and come to the present moment and engage with the task. So, by practicing mindfulness, you will be able to experience flow more and more into more and more diverse activities. Uh, so, because it will it will train your mind to focus on the present moment and engage with the task. So, practicing mindfulness uh, may will promote flow experiences and you will be able to engage with much more diverse activities than in general what you may be you know engage in flow experiences only in some particular task. So, the next is relationships. Uh, the relationships we have also talked in details in, in the lecture where we discuss coping with social support. And we have discussed that we are all social animals and there is an inbuilt motivation and need within us to, uh, to belong to a community or a family or to connect with people. So, it is a very inbuilt you know uh, motivation and need within all of us uh, and uh, so we are social animal. So, that is something you know which constantly you know helps us or 
you know, motivates us to seek relationships and find happiness from the relationship. So, this is uh, very important for sense of uh, you know, enhancing our well-being, positive relationship with people. And it is also very imp important that, you know, uh, the relationships are very important for increasing our sense of resilience because in the in the time of adversity it is the relation or people who are supporting people or network of people around us uh, which plays very important role in terms of bouncing back so if you have a good supportive network you can very easily bounce back from a uh, difficult situation because uh, you know uh, you will have more added resources to to you whatever resources you have to deal with the situation it will be added to other resources, resources of other individuals in your network. So, you will be very easily and uh, come out from that situation. So, it is very important for sense of resilience also that you have a good uh, support network. So, we have discussed about you know, diverse aspect to it also in the earlier also. So, social support is particularly important, you know, personal resource because it helps to provide access to further resources uh, beyond those already possessed by just individuals. So, that is the key thing that is why you know, you know it is very important for both well-being as well as uh, resilience so therefore our relationships and social supports are one of the most significant source of well-being and resilience so building relationship uh, this past also we have discussed and uh, so the basic idea in building relationship is to is basically two aspects one is to identify and improve the problems in the existing uh, social network so, existing also there may be, you know, we may be connected to so many people, but our relationship is not that good in ma with many people, primarily because of our small, small issues and egoistic issues, uh, because of which there may be some problem in the existing social relationships. So, it is important to identify them and remove those you know, def deficiencies as much as possible. So, it will enhance our, our relationship quality. Uh, and the second aspect is obviously you can always build new connections on new relationships uh, which can be done in many ways we have already discussed many aspects to it uh, primarily it can be done by you know let's say participating in uh, groups whatever groups you know people with like minded people can you know connect to various professional groups or um, you know uh, hobby related group groups and so many uh, groups nowadays physical groups are there are some time online groups are there where you can connect with many people who are similar to your thinking pattern and you can connect with people uh, so you can uh, uh, participate in the groups and communities that you like where you can find like minded people you can also engage in various altruistic and volunteering activities where you can uh, find out people who are similar to you so, there are many ways by which you can build new relationships and connections and, uh, uh, and another way is obviously, you know, improving the existing deficiencies in the social support network. So, these are some of the important ways by which you can build uh, more, you know, better social relationship and positive relationships. The next is meaning in life, the next, next component of PERMA model, uh, which is important for both well-being as well as resilience. So, meaning in life is about, it is a very subjective thing, you know, everybody has uh, different concepts of meaning in life and it is about doing things that are valuable, that are worthwhile. So, if you think you are doing something engaged or you are engaged in uh, things that are valuable, uh, that are worthwhile then your sense of meaning will be much higher in your life as compared to when you say I am engaged in worthless activities uh, that may not give you a sense of meaning and purpose in your life. So, basically this involves belonging to or serving something that we believe is greater than ourselves. So, another aspect to meaning in life is basically whenever we engaged in or serve something which is uh, beyond just my own personal self interest or personal life, uh, if, if you become a part of something bigger. Uh, then also it enhances your sense of meaning. So, so the search for meaning is another very fundamental motivation within all of us. We all want to make our life meaningful and purposeful because without sense of meaning and purpose, you know, uh, we will not be able to, you know, we will not get any motivation to lead our life, you know. So, maybe a lot of depressed people, maybe they do not find meaning in their life. So, one of the reason could be lack of meaning 
uh, may lead to depression. Uh, then you do not find why should I even you know, uh, you know do anything in your life. So, the sense of motivation, active engagement in life is strongly connected to your sense of meaning. The more meaning you will have in a particular context or life in general, you will be more actively involved in those things. So, it is a very important intrinsic motivation within all of us and we will talk more also about this aspect in one whole lecture on meaning in life in the upcoming lecture. So, an individual achieves meaning in life when his or her life is experienced as purposeful, significant and understandable. So, when you have that is some of the indicators of meaning in life. When you perceive your life as purposeful, it is significant and it is understandable. So, there is a sense and logic in your life or whatever activities that you do. And this sense of purpose provides individual with goals that guide action and promote well-being. So, it always helps you to guide action no, and promote sense of well-being. Finding meaning in one life is very important determinant for psychological well-being. So, for psychological well-being also it is very important and for resilience also. So, in this context you know philosopher Nietzsche once said one statement that you know uh, he, uh, he who has a why to live can bear with almost any how. So, basically what he is saying, so I will just, uh, for, so that is very important in the context of meaning in life is that he said. So, this is the statement given by Nietzsche, uh, where he said, he who has a why to live can bear with almost any how. What is the meaning of this is basically, if you have a answer to why should I live, if you have an answer to this question. So, that is the meaning, that is the concept of meaning in life, means you have a reason to live, why should I live. So, that that is why question answer is answer gives you meaning in your life. So, if you have a meaning in your life or why to live that answer you have very clear, then you can bear with almost anyhow. In any situation, any problem, any difficulties that comes, you can bear with them and come out because you have a sense of purpose and meaning. So, whatever problems and difficulties come, you can bear with them and you know, kind of fight back and uh, simply because of this sense of meaning will give you strength and motivation to come out of it. So, that is why it is very important importantly connected to the sense of resilience also. So, sense of meaning is very important and it is a very deep, deeper sense uh, which may uh, you know give you help you to cope with the difficulties of life in a very subtle way without really you know realizing uh, you know or consciously doing about with a particular situation. So, building meaning is very subjective you know about building meaning in your life is a subjective thing and everybody find meaning in different things. So, there cannot be given a generalized uh, statement about it. So, people may find meaning in different things, uh, people may find meaning in the professions or the job that they are doing, they may find it very meaningful and it may give you sense of purpose in their life. Some people find meaning in the creative pursuits that they do in their life, some people find meaning in their hobbies that uh, whatever hobbies that they are doing. Uh, some people find meaning in volunteering for a cause greater than themselves uh, for social well social welfare or community welfare people do so many things so they find meaning in those things so so find your own meaning and uh, maybe you know devote time try to devote more time in those kind of activities so that is the thing because it is very subjective you know there cannot be one meaning for everybody it is a kind of you know uh, cultural contrast it con kind of concept that we develop, uh, very subjectively it can be developed. Uh, so, the idea of meaning has to be you know explored by yourself only and uh, you need to find it out and you need to work towards that. So, basically the idea is get involved in causes greater than your own personal life that also enhances your sense of meaning. 
So, in small way or bigger ways, you can you know contribute to things that are just beyond your own self interest. So, it could be doing something for the community, doing for something from the society or even in your job context, doing something for the organization beyond just your own personal role can also enhance sense of meaning. So, whenever you find yourself as a part of something bigger, uh, it will naturally enhance your sense of meaning. The last component is accomplishment or achievement. Mm. So, basically uh, this is also an important uh, you know, uh, concepts that keeps us sense of or increases sense of our well-being. So, it is about things that we have done or accomplished in our life. You know. So, whenever we think about our life, so there may be many things that we have accomplished. It could be small thing, it could be sometimes big things. Uh, so, all these things gives us a sense of accomplishment, what I have achieved in my life. Uh, so, it is mostly connected with uh, you know working and you know identifying and working towards and reaching towards different goals in our life, short term goal, long term goal, whatever it is. All these you know identifying goals and reaching towards them uh, you know is connected to our sense of accomplishment or achievement. So, when we talk about accomplishment or achievement, uh, we are not talking about you know, accomplishing something very big. It can be small things. For example, you know, uh, people may enhance their sense of accomplishment. Even for example, you know, you may target a goal such as you know, doing half an hour exercise every day and achieving that can enhance your sense of accomplishment. So, it is something very individual, uh, but you know, small thing, but you know, you set a target and try to achieve that. So, that will that can also enhance your sense of achievement. It is not necessarily all the time you know some big goals that needs to be achieved. <coughs> so, such thing also can uh, sense of uh, accomplishment, happiness and well being. So, it uh, it increases our sense of self uh, esteem and confidence. So, with the sense of accomplishment it enhances our self esteem. So, we feel good about ourselves. So, that is the meaning of self esteem and our sense of confidence. There is an important concept that is connected to accomplishment is called as grit. Grit is also associated with goal setting and uh, no, um, accomplishment. Uh, it was proposed by a psychologist named Angela Duckworth. Uh, she particularly used this term to uh, connote the idea of perseverance and passion for long term goals. Perseverance and passion for long term goals. So, grit is a quality uh, of people who persevere consistently work towards long term goals. Short term goals uh, obviously, you can very easily achieve them, but long term goal achievement of long term goals needs lot of persistence, lot of efforts and you need to face lot of failures again and again. So, that quality to engage and persevere in the long term goals is called as grit. So, some people you know may have lot of higher grit and that can really you know make lot of difference in terms of achievement in your life, your sense of achievement. So, people with grit are more likely to achieve uh, various difficult goals in their life. Uh, so, people who exhibit grit persevere at the at their goals over time even at the face of failures and adversity. So, that is very important. Generally, people um, may not get the enough strength and motivation to work towards a goal when they experience failure in their task. So, in despite failure, uh, if you are able to work towards a goal again and again. So, that perseverance is very important and that quality is called as grit. So, it is specially important to achieve this quality is specially important to achieve high and difficult goals where sustained application of talent over time is required. So, so certain goals uh, achievement requires this quality and people who succeed in lot of tasks may have this quality especially you know achieve you know uh, long term and uh, difficult goals in their life. So, how can we build sense of accomplishment? So, building sense of accomplishment is basically connected to setting achievable and realistic goals. So, if you 
achieve a goal which is not realistic for you, then uh, you will fail, uh, experience failure again and again and uh, you may not have motivation to work towards that after some time. So, it is important that uh, you set goals which are achievable and realistic for your context, uh, then your chances of achieving them will be much higher. Uh, goals always need not be very big and uh, high all the time. Setting achievable small goals on a daily basis, you know, uh, can increase our sense of accomplishment. So, goals always need, can be broken, even long term goal can be broken in terms of short term goals. So, you need to achieve something within a year, you can break that goal into more you know, short term specific goals, maybe say what you need to achieve in this particular week, what you need to achieve in this month. So, in that way we can always work towards a long term goal, a more achievable goals. Uh, so, even small goals can also give you a sense of achievement. So, set your goals uh, by assessing your own strengths, talents and skills and persevere in it. So, many times we experience failure. But, uh, you know, if it is important achievable goal, you need to focus and persevere in, in that. That is very important. And after a few times of failure, if you achieve it, your sense of achievement will be much higher rather than achieving something which is much more easier. So, that is also another important dimension. Also, you can celebrate your achievements with yourself and others. So, whenever you achieve something, if you celebrate it with your near and dear ones, that also gives or enhances your sense of achievement, if other people also recognizes it, understands it. Uh, research also shows that achieving intrinsic goals, uh, which are related to growth and connection rather than money and status, produces larger gains in well-being. So, intrinsic goal means goals that you set by yourself, which you like to achieve them, uh, as compared to extrinsic goals, which are kind of given to them by uh, some outside agencies or people. So, Achieving intrinsic goal is always gives you more sense of well-being, uh, simply because it is your own thing that you like, rather than something forced on you. So these are some of the ways by which we can build sense of accomplishment. So building a resilience. So we have discussed this PARMA model of Seligman, and uh, we try to understand that all these five components of PARMA model. Uh, are very important components for our well-being and they include both the hedonic dimension as well as eudynamic dimensions. And so, this is a model of well-being. So, these components are directly connected to our sense of well-being, but uh, it is also important that you know these dimensions also are very important for enhancing our sense of resilience also. So, so that is why in that context we try to understand uh, briefly about these components and how to enhance this component in our life, so that we can build our uh, sense of well-being and uh, resilience. So, in the last thought of building resilience is about, you know, so, um, uh, so we can understand how these components are important to resilience by uh, uh, reading this statement that, you know, American uh, Psychological Association website also, you know, uh, discusses that, you know, there are four key components for enhancing resilience. And these components are build connections, foster wellness, embrace healthy thinking and find purpose and meaning. So, you can very clearly see these are all connected to PARMA model and we have already discussed all these components in that context. So, this, these are important for you know, enhancing or building our sense of resilience. So, the crux is that any strategy that leads to healthy coping and foster sense of well-being can increase our sense of resilience also. So, anything that we do to enhance our or uh, healthy ways of coping or dealing with the situation, because resilience is all about also dealing with the situation. And if our sense of well-being is much higher or anything that we do to increase our well-being, also it kind of gives an additional resources to come out of a situation and bounce back uh, from a difficult situation. So, healthy coping strategies and enhancing our sense of well-being are the key things to enhance our sense of resilience. Uh, so, with this uh, I will stop today's lecture. Thank you.